go. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. And we are gonna be having a lot of fun tonight. I wanna to talk about going from concept to idea. How do you take an idea of something you wanna build and turn it into an actual design that you can work off of? Uh, so that will be the, the fun of tonight. So it should be a little bit different. We're not actually gonna be building something, but it's a little bit more of the cognitive skills required to build things. Um, a couple things coming up. Uh, number one, next week uh, we'll I don't know if we're going to be doing the live or if we're going to be moving it. My wife and I will be in, uh, um, we'll be south of London, um, somewhere in the UK. <laughs> so we may actually be doing a Q&A from the Airbnb that we'll be staying at, in which case I might be able to have my parents in with me. Uh, so that should be a fun time. Uh, but stay tuned. They will probably be earlier in the day than normal because we'll be in the UK. Um, but I'll be posting that ahead of time on the Wood by Right page and then on the Wood by Right Hive Mind group on Facebook. Um, so if you stay up to date on those, um, I'll be posting it earlier in the day on Tuesday of when we'll be doing the live. Um, yeah, other than that, I will be at uh, Makers Central a week from this weekend. And my wife and I will be walking around and schmoozing. So feel free to come up and say hi. I'm looking forward to seeing a bunch of uh, Europeans and uh, people from the UK. People I don't get to see regularly around here, so that should be a lot of fun. And if you do see me, feel free to come up and say hi. I'm looking forward to, to meeting everyone and, uh, and hanging out and spending some time. I really don't have a huge amount of plans other than uh, getting to know you guys, so feel free to come up and, and uh, say hey. <laughs> uh, what else am I thinking? Uh, MWTCA, the na first national meet, the spring meet of the year, will be in June down in Peoria, Illinois, and I will also be there. So. What's that? They say you're a little quiet. Am I a little quiet? Yeah, let me check my boost. So I may have switched over some things when recording earlier. And I'm on there, testing. Huh, okay, let me just bump this up then. Let me see which one are you plugged into. You are into this one. So let's just bump that up and see if I'm better now. Uh, there, that should be about as loud as I can make it. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if not, we'll try and figure something else out. Uh, so let me know how the audio is going now. Uh, let's see. So what else? We got that. We got that. Um, my wife is laughing, so. <laughs> it's probably a bad thing, but I'm okay with it. Uh, oh, we do have a winner because we didn't do a drawing last week, but we did the drawing from two weeks ago, uh, which was how long is the band on my scroll saw? And so I actually got to measuring it and put that out there. And the winner is, um, I wrote down, it's a four on the piece of paper up just above the, the, the uh, button thing. Yeah, written on oh, the bottom. Kuro? Kuro. Kuro? K-U-R-O. Um, so I sent you a message. If you can send me an email on my inbox, um, I can get that mailed out to you. Uh, we will not be doing a giveaway tonight because we are going to be out of town um, so we'll be picking that up when we get back. Uh, we'll be actually, we'll be doing it live here uh, next week. Oh, well, uh, the next two Tuesdays I'm going to be in the UK. Um, so I don't know what we're going to be doing the live. We're going to do both of them there or if we're just going to do one of the two of them. So stay tuned. We're going to be playing that by ear. Um, any questions before I jump in? John Lane asks, which is smoother, birch or spruce? Is what? Smoother, birch or spruce? Uh, usually birch. Birch is a pretty smooth wood. It's a really nice wood to work with, especially with hand tools. It's a very creamy wood. Um, spruce is a little bit stringy in comparison. So spruce is a little bit lighter weight. So both are very easy to work with hand tools though. Okay, uh, let's actually talk through design. So uh, we need to pick a piece of furniture. So I need you guys to put into the comments what furniture you want me to design tonight. And we're actually gonna go through talking through a fictional piece of furniture. So type that down below. Uh, so the intention is we're gonna take this piece of furniture and we're gonna talk about how do we go about designing all the pieces that come into it and just doing it all in our heads and getting to the point where we can actually sit down and make out designs for it. Or if we want to make out designs, Could you may not need to. A poll ahead of time? I thought about it ahead of time, but then I forgot, and, and you know, that's the way I work. <laughs> so what are we getting in here? Although we're probably waiting a few yeah, seconds before nah, we'll start typing. Um, because I'm gonna be pointing out a few things. We're working on the bed. Well, let me show you this while we're waiting, because I've got the, the bed frame yeah, here okay. up and going. Oh, you haven't seen this yet, have you, babe? Because we have the, um, this is the headboard. 
So there'll be the hash work that goes up here between the legs. And then this is the, uh, uh, the bottom. So our heads will be like right here where the blue tapes are. So yeah, um, and I'll be kind of talking through some of this, how I came up with these designs as well. So what are some of the oh, things we've got? We have coffee table, couch, trestle table, side table, chest of drawers, bedside table, Sam move chair, coffee table, hall table with a drawer and coffee table. I've seen coffee table more than either. So let's do a coffee table. Um, now a coffee table is, well, I mean, just about any table is pretty simple. So let's let's just start with like the, the basic table that most people think of. Wow, I'm pointing at the ceiling. You like looking at my ductwork. Um, a coffee table or any table is, it's going to be a large surface and you want to support that surface so it doesn't bend and you need to have some way to keep it stable. So the general common way is to use four legs and then a skirt that connects the legs. The skirt holds the legs in place and the skirt also supports the tabletop so it doesn't want to flex any particular area. Uh, that is often the, uh, the, the shaker method, uh, although it's much older than the shakers. Um, and you can do the exact same thing for a hall table, a coffee table, a side table, or a kitchen table. And you can just sh change the sizes any way you want to go. But the first thing you need to do is identify the maximum dimensions. And for a table, usually the first dimension you think about is the height. How tall do you want the table to be? And then you need to figure out its length, its width. So for the height, um, usually what I'll do is I, I like going to furniture stores. And so I'll take a tape measure with me and a clipboard and I'll go to furniture stores and I'll measure different tables and I'll be like, I like this one. And it is 18 inches high. There we go. Uh, now, 18 inches high is a bit high for a coffee table. Um, usually coffee tables are down around 14 inches or so. But uh, I mean, coffee tables can be anything you make them want, make anything you make them. Um, so the next thing we have to figure out is the width and the length. And this is where things start to get tricky because a coffee table can be any shape or size you want it to be. And you have to figure out how do you want it to fit in your room. So when I built the coffee table I have upstairs, what I did is I have, we have a couch on either side and I extended the footrest so that when the couch was in the middle with both of the footrests out, your feet didn't hit the coffee table as they came up. And that told me the width of the coffee table. And so I could, I could dimension things to that. When I made the dresser, I had a space between where the door opens and another door jam, and that space determined the length of the dresser. For the bed, I'm judging how big the bed is by the mattress. And so I literally went upstairs with a tape measure and I measured my mattress. It's this by, it's really this much. And that gave me my initial measurements <laughs> for the bed. Thank you, Alan. What does it have? Do you still have a drinking problem? Influence, yes. <laughs> well, we've decided that there are several of us who don't actually enjoy coffee, so now it needs to be referred here forward as the hot chocolate table. <laughs> yes, this is a hot chocolate table. I like it. Um, so, Alan, uh, actually, I'll give the joke that Alan said beforehand. Alan had, uh, did you hear about the, the tree that uh, got stood up by another tree? Yeah, he should have put a ring on it. You had better ones earlier. What were the, what were the ones you had the other day? <laughs> well, okay, here's another one. It's, uh, how many apples grow on a tree? All of them. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Those were not the ones you told me. <laughs> These are not the jokes you're looking for. <laughs> um, so when you're talking about the maximum design, maximum dimension of a piece of furniture, do not be held to rules of thumb because rules of thumb are absolute trash when it comes to maximum Hot dimensions. <laughs> oh, yes. um, you, can, you can pick anything you want. You can make it whatever you want. My table is about an inch higher than an average table because I like that height. Don't tell my wife that though. <laughs> because I, height, but you married me. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I like my table to be a little bit higher. Um, and different people are going to like different things. And chairs, generally a chair's height is 18 inches off the floor. But if I were making a chair specifically for my wife, I'd make it a little shorter. Thank you. If I were making it for me, I might make DJ. it a little taller. What's that? You have, another, you have no little whirly giggies. Whoa, I don't have whirly giggies out. Let's see, who is that? TJJN06. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see, you need a joke. Uh, spring is here. I got so excited, I wet my plants. Dude, where are the ones from the other day? They were I thought that was a good one. I like so that one. Ah, oh, fine. Okay, uh, maximum dimensions. So, 
you can make it whatever you want. Now, there is a great book out there called By Hand and Eye. Um, it's been republished by Lost Art Press. And if you want to read that, that is a great source of the, um, uh, of the rules of thumb and the, the rules of thirds and, and the, the rules of design. Uh, it's a great book. Definitely read it. It's well worth it. But when you're going to design something, look at that book and throw it away. You can make a piece of furniture any size and shape you want. And I usually tell people, design the furniture to fit the space you're putting it in. So measure out what you want. Take a piece of cardboard out, set it on the floor, and measure out what you're, what you're thinking, and, and find out what those spaces are. Actually measure in place. Because if you measure 18 inches, so I'm going to say a chair height, and here's my bench, and that's 18 inches. So that is the height of a chair. And I look at that and I think, that is really, really short. Uh, that's not real. But if I go up and actually measure some chairs, that holds up pretty well. Um, so measure what you find and see what you like. Don't be afraid to hold to rules. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, what any questions before we move on to the next? Cool. I mean, if you guys have any questions, jump in. Uh, we're going to be talking through some of these, these items here. So then we actually need to start getting into design. So we're going to make the coffee table. Um, do I have those pieces? Ah, oh, shoot, they're over there. Let's do... What do you need? Uh, well, I'm just going to do can an I imaginary piece of glass. All right. Nope, I'm not going to check glass at you. This is a piece of glass. <laughs> when I made my coffee table upstairs, um, I wanted to make a glass top. And I found a couple pieces of glass at a store. Uh, actually, no, at a garage sale. Um, and they were, they were they're, um, tensioned pieces of glasses for a shelf. So they were, they were designed to have things set on them. And it was perfect for it. The problem was they were, um, I think they were about 8 inches by 30 inches long. And so I didn't want my coffee table to be 8 inches by 30 inches long. I wanted it to be wider. So what I did is I put two pieces of glass side by side, and then I spaced them apart by 2 inches because I thought I might have a strip in between to separate the two pieces of glass. And then I figured there'd be a border running around the outside of about eh, three and a half inches. And so then my, my, the width of my coffee table was three and a half inches plus the eight inches of glass plus the two inches of spacer plus the eight inches of glass plus the three and a half inches of spacer on the other side. And that was my finished dimension. I didn't care what it was as long as it actually fit. And so that's how I figured out the coffee table. <laughs> Whoa! Wow, we're having fun tonight. What is this? Five for the table minus... A buck for the joke. <laughs> nice. Uh, here we go. Um, did you hear the rumor about butter? No, don't worry. I'm not going to spread that one. Okay, I kind of like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the top of the coffee table was determined by the glass, um, by the glass I wanted in the top. And then the rim around the outside of the glass was whatever boards I had sticking around, which were like three and a half dimensions. So they were standard one by fours, which are three quarter by three and a half inches. Um, and so that determined the top of that. Now, when I made the coffee table that I have upstairs, I never measured anything. I never actually measured the glass to see it was 8 inches by 30 inches. It's, it's something around those lengths. I don't know what those dimensions are. I never mentioned them. What I did was I held the glass up against the board, and I marked one side and I marked the other side, and I used the reality of the glass to mark the board. Most people, when they're trying to figure out, thing, trying to figure out sizes, they measure the glass, and then they take the tape measure over, and they measure the board. Well, the problem is, every time you move from one item to another, you add, uh, you add um, compounding errors into it. And so if you can skip the tape measure, you can be even more accurate in your measurements. Uh, so that's another reason why I say reality is far better. When I made the dresser, I literally took a stick. I had like a, a seven foot long stick upstairs. And I opened the door so I knew the, where the starting point of the dresser would be. And then I held the stick up from there across and I made a mark on the stick where it ran into the door jam on the other side. And that stick was my measurement. That was the reality. So my dresser was going to be that long. And when I made the top for it, I cut it to that. <laughs> um, and so usually whenever you're making a coffee table or something of that nature, your top dimension is the dimension you build everything off of. So we've got our, our top, which is we're gonna say randomly, we need it to be 30 inches by 24 inches. Fairly common coffee table. So that's easy enough to cut the simple top. The top is going to be cut that long and that wide. And then we need to figure out how long do we make the legs. 
Well, if we're going to make the legs 24 inches or whatever size we chose, then we just say the leg is going to be x long minus the thickness of the top. Um, and so literally you could put the, the, the leg on there, make a mark at how high you want the table, then put the thickness of the top on there and make a mark underneath that and you have a precise length of that leg. You never even have to measure it. You can just figure that out by reality. Um, and so that we, we can then take it piece by piece by piece by piece. And so usually for a coffee table, I'm going to build the top. And then you need to figure out how long do you want your stretchers to be. Well, you flip the top upside down, you put it on the bench, you stand your legs on there, and then you can put your stretcher on there and make a mark between the legs, wherever the legs happen to be. And one stretcher is always going to equal the other stretcher. And so whatever that one is, you just take that stretcher, you make it over the other one, and you cut both at the same time in the same place. And then, that way the two stretchers are the exact same length. And you can take things step by step by step through that. So if you want to make a drawer, you have your stretchers connected to your legs, which are on your tabletop. Well, then you cut out a hole in one of the stretchers and you put in your drawer. And you can take things from the big shape down to smaller and smaller and smaller pieces and work everything off of the reality you have. So when I made the dresser, I had the length of the dresser, that stick that was important. The depth of the dresser, I wanted to make 18 inches because it was a nice round number, so I just made it 18 inches. And the height of the dresser was this, or actually it was like that. Um, so I, I found something, I thought this would be a comfortable height for a dresser, and I made that the height. Um, and then I need to lay out where do the drawers go in it. Well, it's just a simple thing. I want my bottom stretcher to be an inch and a half off the ground, and then my stretcher is four inches. And then I want four drawers between there and the top. So I've subtracted the space in the bottom, I've subtracted the stretcher, I've subtracted the thickness of the top, and I have a certain amount of difference between those. Well, I want a three quarter inch spacer in between each of the drawers. Uh, so if I want four rows of drawers, that means three three quarter inch spacers. So I'll subtract that thickness out of there. And then I'll be left with whatever's left, and I just divide that by four. And whatever that is, is now the height of all my dressers. Uh, my drawers and so you can you can break things down step by step by step and and uh, people like to really overthink this and think about the the specifics of how that all goes but if you think about it from the largest piece and then start breaking things down into their smaller components and take it step by step and just work through it and at some point you're going to run into something like hmm i can't figure out this item until i get that item figured out like uh, for instance i wanted to find out how deep the drawers need to be. So the drawers need to slide into the dresser, or in this case, we're gonna have a coffee table. So the drawer needs to slide in through the skirt of the coffee table into the, the coffee table itself. Well, how deep can that drawer be? Well, that drawer is determined by how close together the stretchers are. Well, I don't really have a specific of how close the stretchers are until I've measured the stretchers on the two ends. And then those stretchers determine how far apart the legs are. Well, the, the stretchers can still move in and out on the legs. So I have to pick a particular distance that those connect on the legs. And I can't pick the dresser, the drawer depth until I put the, the stretchers in place. And so at some point, you just have to make a random guess if I want it to be here. And you can work off of that. So I'm going to say the stretchers need to be in, recessed one quarter inch on the face of the leg. And I'll recess it on the back one quarter inch. And so then I have the thickness of the, 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 the skirt, and then we have the distance in between that. That's my drawer size. Um, and so for me, that's really not a problem because I can, I can do that in my brain. This is just the way I've, 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 I've done things. I've been designing things since I was five. Um, and so I can, I can come up with all those measurements and, and chop them all out in my brain. But for most people, you're going to want to grab a piece of paper and start sketching it out. Uh, so I wanted to show you some of the basics that I often do on this. Oop, wrong one. When figuring these dimensions out. Because most of the time, whenever you're figuring out how big something should be, it is a process of elimination. Um, so let's use that. Oop, one, two, that one. Oh, so. Oh, hang on, hang on. you got to focus. Yeah, I haven't gone there yet. I gotta get something to focus on, there we go. There. So um, let's use this coffee table here and we wanna figure out how deep our drawer needs to be. So our coffee table is 24 inches deep. Um, oh, I'm gonna be upside down, let me do it this way. 24 inches. Um, and then we're gonna have a leg here and we're gonna have a leg here. I have amazing drawing skills as you can tell. Absolutely amazing. And I want my legs to be in one inch from here and one inch from here. So I can subtract 
this one inch and this one inch. So now we're down to 22. I'm going to write it sideways so I can see. And then my leg, um, I want the skirt to intersect the leg one quarter inch back here and one quarter inch back here. So one quarter inch plus one quarter inch is a half inch. So now we're down to 21 and one half inch. Plus, um, and so I want the, we're going to put the stretcher on okay, here. Can I ask a question? Here. What's that? Is the 24 inches inside or outside measurement? The 24 inches is the, is the table top. So that is here to here. There you go, Josh. Um, and so I want my drawer to be from the front face of the stretcher to the front face of the back stretcher. So I want to go from here back to here. So now I've, I've minus the thickness of the leg in, I've minus the thickness of the stretcher in, and now I just need to minus the thickness of the back stretcher. I don't need to minus the thickness of the front stretcher because I'm going to be coming to that. So that's three quarter inch. So that's going to take me down to 20 and three quarter inch. So I know that my drawer can be from the front edge of this stretcher to the back here is now 20 and three quarter inch. And so you can see how it's just this process of elimination. You're starting from the big and you're taking away everything until you've, get, you've gotten down to the measurement you need. And so I know that this board for the dresser from that point to that point is 20 and 3 quarter inch. And I can write that down on my cut list. So I'm going to need one board for this side of the drawer, one board for this side of the drawer. And so those are going to be 20 and 3 quarter inch. And then I have to figure out how wide do I want this drawer to be. Well, in this case, um, I'd be having the width of this. So if this is, um, do it up here. So if this is 30 inches from here to here, and these legs are inset one inch, so that knocks it down to 28 inches because those are in there. And then these legs are two inches each, so that's going to take four more inches off, so we're down to 24 inches um, between there and there. So that's my stretcher size. So my drawer cannot be wider than 24 inches. Well, let's say I want to make it uh, 18 inches wide. So it's going to be 18 inches wide by 20 and 3 quarter. Well, the, the front and back boards of this drawer box are then going to be whatever length they side. So that can be 18 inches. If there's any questions, go ahead and stop me. So I can start on my cut list. Sides of the drawer are 20 and 3 quarters. Front and back of the drawer are 18 inches. The height of that drawer can be whatever height I want it to be, but it's usually whatever the thickness of my stretcher is, or a smaller amount of that, depending upon how I'm going to do the drawer sliding, excuse me, sliding through that stretcher. Um, and I'm just going to be making a list off of here, labeling them out, saying this is that, this is that, um, and going through this all step by step. And so usually this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to have all these items laid out here. So I'm going to have tabletop as item number one, legs are item number two, um, front and back stretchers are item number three, side stretchers are item number four, sides of drawers are five, front and back of drawers are six, drawer bottom is seven, um, drawer slides are eight, and so then I'm, out, I'm going down here and I'm making a list of how all those sizes are as I chop them all out. And I may end up going back and changing things like, ah, no, I actually want this drawer to be a little wider, so I'm going to have to actually make this whole tabletop a little bigger. Um, most of the time, I'm not going to do something that drastic because I've determined the tabletop ahead of time. Um, that's how I'm going to basically be cutting through everything in a cut list. Any questions before I? No. Really? Well, there are, but not specifically to what you're speaking. I don't know if there's anything particular about it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just going in order. John Lane had asked, what wood do you like to use the most? Oh, white oak. <laughs> um, was it your typical whatever you have on hand? <laughs> yeah. Uh, here, let me show you this, though, then, since we're... Woo, go back around here. So, on this, the bed here that I was working on, when I designed the, the height of this bed, um, so I wanted to figure out how tall to make this, I literally said, I want the bed to be, th I want the, the hop to be this high. And I brought a stick out and I measured that height. And that is the length of these legs. To come up with the width of it, I need to be able to fit my mattress on here. And my mattress needs to be able to fit inside of the stretchers that go between the headboard and the footboard. So the stretchers need to be X width apart, whatever those were. 
and I need the stretchers to hit these boards in the middle. So if this is four inches wide, or actually I think these are, yeah, these are four inch wide. So no, they're a little less than four inches or something like that. They're a random measurement of whatever they ended up coming out at. So if this is four inches wide, and I want my three quarter inch stretcher to intersect with this leg right in the middle, uh, that's gonna make it uh, what, three and a quarter inch, that's total left over, so that's gonna be an inch and a half plus an eighth, uh, so an inch and five eighths. So an inch and five eighths in from the leg is where the stretcher intersects. So if I measure the width of the mattress, minus an inch and, an inch, inch and five eighths, and minus an inch and five eighths, then that is uh, inch and 10 eighths, so that's one and a quarter. So that's three and a quarter inches. Um, so the width of the, width of the mattress minus three and a quarter inches gives me the length of the stretcher from this shoulder to that shoulder. And then because I want through tenons, I have to extend the length of that by the thickness of my leg plus a quarter inch sticking out the other side. And so I'm just taking it the exact same way through this whole thing. Now, this then brings me into the problem that most people have is that I do all of this in my brain. I, I, I'm fairly decent at that. And so you give me the, the outside measurements and I can cut this all down apart in my brain. Most people can't do that. And if you can, great, you, you're a step ahead of most people. Um, most people need to either write it out on paper, which is the old fashioned way of doing it and works really well, or pull out a computer program. And there are a bunch of different computer programs that go into doing this. Um, I have, in my theater background, I have a CAD background, so I'm, I'm used to doing AutoCAD. And if it were up to me, I would be doing this on a full version AutoCAD. Um, and, uh, oh, come on, what's the, the CAD program now? Um, total mind blank. The one you use now? No, the AutoCAD, the free, that's not free, but it's close to free. Um, I'll remember it here in a moment. Um, the most common one that people use now is SketchUp, or it was the most common. It's now kind of going out of style. Um, and so for all the plans that I designed for Wood by Write and sell on my website, um, I use SketchUp. And that's not because it's the best program. It is the most widely used program. It's a free program that anyone can download. Um, now, I have to say... Fusion 360? Fusion 360, that's the AutoCAD one. Um, if, if I had my druthers and I wasn't making it for the average Joe, I would design in Fusion 360. It's a far easy, it's a far bigger program with far more aspects and it's easier for me, but it's a very, very hard thing to learn for most people. SketchUp is, is dead easy. Anyone can pick it up in a half hour or so. Um, it goes really, really easily. Um, they're trying to make SketchUp, though, less free, and so it becomes harder. If you use the 2017 version, which you can still download the 2017 version, it's completely free and has all the bells and whistles, um, it, with, with, a, with a few exceptions. Um, and so that's what I use right now. I have the 2017 version of AutoCAD. Um, if you just Google download 2017 SketchUp, um, it'll bring you to a page where you can download that. Um, and so that's what I use because that is what the average Joe woodworker can easily learn. Um, it's not great for drawing out blueprints, but most people don't build from blueprints. They just want to figure out the sizes and create a cut list. The nice thing about... Do you know what that? I'm sorry, Esrit, you just asked a very important question. <laughs> What's that? Star Wars or Star Trek? <sighs> Depends on I know my answer. Oh, you, you're Star Wars. I'm Star Wars. Yeah. Um, if I was really pushed to it, I would say Star Wars. But Star Trek's really, really close. Star Trek has a lot more family history for me. <laughs> Prior to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, Stargate. Um, oh, Stargate's good. Yeah, so, so I use SketchUp to design my plans. It's not great for making blueprints because taking measurements in it is a little bit of a problem, but for doing three-dimensional drawings, it is phenomenally easy. And you can make all of your joinery in it pretty quickly. Um, now, I don't want to go into all the ins and outs of how to use SketchUp because there are thousands of tutorials out there and we could spend hours on there going through ins and outs and upside downs. 
Um, and so uh, if you really want more information on that, I would say go look at Jay Bates. Um, he has several really, really good videos on how to use a SketchUp for woodwork drawing. Um, phenomenal work he does on there. Um, so definitely, definitely go take a look at that. Um, so for the average Joe, just wanting to scratch up some designs, 30, 40 minutes of SketchUp tutorials and you can be off to running on that. And there are some plugins you can get that actually dump out cut lists. Um, I don't use those. I prefer easily. I, I literally sit down with a piece of paper outside or I have a, uh, a spreadsheet on the computer and I'll measure stretches are this long by this by this and I'll write it down. And then the uh, side stretchers are this by this by this and I'll write it down. I need two of those. I need two of those legs. I need four of those and they're this by this and I make my cut list off of that. Um, if I am designing for myself and I'm designing a project that I'm going to build and I'm not going to be giving it to anyone else, I do not design anything. I may not even complete the designs in my head before I start building because the most important thing are usually the maximum sizes. Like on the coffee table, the tabletop. So I'm going to start by cutting the tabletop. And once I have that tabletop, then everything is built off of that. And I can just take it one step at a time, make each piece one step at a time, and go through it completely without ever putting a design down on paper. And as long as I do it one at a time, like I make the top one day, and I make the legs another day, and I make the front and back stretchers another day, and then I make the side stretchers another day, and I take it step by step, you can go through the whole thing without doing designs because you have a reality there to measure off of. You have a, something you can stick a board up to and make a mark and say it needs to be cut this long. Not because that's what my design says, but that's what reality is. And that's where a lot of people have problems is they get a cut list and they go to town and they cut out every board in the cut list only to find out that they accidentally messed up and they moved one leg a little bit over. And that changes the next measurement, the next measurement, the next measurement, the next measurement. And so all the cuts you made ahead of time are completely wrong. So even if you have a fully drawn out design, do not go and cut the entire cut list. Um, unless you know yourself and you are a perfectionist, um, that's dangerous. Um, so between SketchUp and Fusion 360, if you are computer savvy and you have the little bit of money to put into getting into Fusion C360, it's not that much. It's like 40 bucks or something like that. Um, Fusion 360 has, is a far better design program and you can actually turn out blueprints and cut lists far easier but it takes a lot more to learn. Uh, Fusion 360 is three or four days worth of learning and figuring it out, as opposed to SketchUp, which is a sit down in 30 to 40 minutes and you can be designing. Um, so give and take on that. And also on top of that, SketchUp, I'm, I'm kind of seeing that they're moving away from the freestyle and they're trying to push people for the pro version. And if you get the pro version, then anything you create, you cannot share with someone who has the free version. And so that's why I still use the free version because if I want to share something, um, I can share it to anyone who has the pro or the free. Um, so you have to kind of think through that. Any questions as I'm going on? Uh, I have a few. Okay. Um, so back to the drawer measurements you were doing. Mm -hmm. Rod Markins asked, are the drawers dovetailed? Of course. Why would I do anything else? <laughs> um, and that's one of the reasons why I one of the reasons why I like through dovetails is because it makes it very easy to figure out lengths. Because if you have through dovetails, then all the boards are cut to the maximum length of the drawer because the dovetails need to go all the way through intersecting each other. If they're half blind dovetails, then the front panel goes the full width, but the side panels don't go the entire depth. They go the whole depth minus the quarter inch that they don't go through on the front. And so it's one more step you have to take off a little bit more in the measurement. Um, and so you have to think about that. And that, that's a good point to bring up. How are you doing the joinery on it? Um, so like when I'm doing the stretchers, I'll measure the distance in between the legs. And that is my measurement shoulder to shoulder. But then I have to figure out how long do I want my tenons to go. I want my tenons to go all the way through the leg, in which case then I'm going to add on the thickness of the leg on either end plus any decorative amount I want sticking out. If I don't, then I'm just going to say, you know, do I want a one inch tenon sticking into either leg? In which case, then I may add one inch onto either end of the board. So if the board's 24 inch plus a one inch tenon, one inch tenon is going to give you 26 inch board. Um, and you have to think about the joinery as you go through it. But that's one of the nice things about doing it step by step. If you, if you cut the boards as you need them and cut them to a reality, 
you can figure out each joint as you come to that joint. Um, so, very good question. What else? Sorry. It's bedtime. <laughs> um, Gigi Nitz asks, okay, off topic. Speaking of making chairs, do you plan on crafting some matching chairs for your new dining room? <laughs> you know, a lot of people want me to make chairs, and I really don't want to make chairs. I, I, uh, chairs do not excite me in any way, shape, or form. Um, I, I like building one-off items, and you can never just build one chair. Now, I have thought about, uh, we, we really like the idea of mismatched chairs and making like a dozen different chairs and a dozen no, different styles. No. That should be the challenge to everyone to make their own chairs <laughs> and then send them in. Yes, I like that one. Um, and so, you know, I might do that. You know, a bench, a bunch of different chairs, one big armchair for the end and that type of thing. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a huge um, chair person. Um, yeah, that's the one thing I really wouldn't mind just buying the right chairs, except for I'm never going to find ones that match what I want if I got a whole set. I do, I mean, the, the, I have to say, this is one of those projects that's running around in the back of my brain, and I've got a whole bunch of projects that are back there, and every now and then I'm walking by something, this is one of the reasons why I'm really looking forward to going to London, is a lot of the historical things and old buildings with architectural details, and sometimes those ideas come into your brain about, hey, I wonder if I could implement that weird art shape into a chair. And that project I have rolling around in the back of my head suddenly comes to the forefront and I can take that piece of inspiration, pull it out, and put it into that project. Um, and uh, the chairs are going around the back of my head because I want something big and beefy that kind of matches the table. But I don't want something with such a complicated base that it just looks like a complicated base with a back on it. Um, so I, I'm thinking through that. And I, one of these days I'll come up with something like, ooh, that's what I want. Because I want something that's simplistic. The table looks complicated with a lot of pieces in there, but it's a very simple construction. Um, there's, there's very little to it. And so I'm looking for something in that that matches the chairs. Simple construction, but looks complicated and different. Um, one of these days I'll come up with something and be like, yeah, that's what I want to do, but I haven't yet. I, I'm, I'm probably going to be building a bench. Um, probably That'll probably be the next thing after the bed is building a bench that then fits along one side for the kids to all sit at. Um, but the bench will be a trestle design that matches the table. Um, so it'll be a very similar construction. Whereas a chair, if I were doing an entire trestle construction for a chair, it would be this mess of, it, there's just so much going on in such a little space, it just wouldn't work right. But yeah, someday, we'll see. So stop asking me to do chairs. I don't like them. <laughs> Although I, I, I do want to do a Windsor rocker sometime, like an ultra lightweight, ultra thin rail, all ribbon rod um, Windsor rocker. I think that would be a fun one, but uh, that's down the roadways. What else? He hasn't decided he wants those tools yet. <laughs> Once I build my outdoor shop. Let's see. Michael Heemstra asked, when designing a project, how do you figure out how do you figure out the, how thick your wood your wood needs for it to be strong enough? Specifically, I am designing a shoe rack with a bench on top. How do I determine the thickness of the top? That is a very good question that, that when you're first getting into it can be very confusing. The, the best answer is you don't really know until you've experienced it. And most of the time, people way overbuild things. Um, wood is an incredibly strong surface, and you can, you can do a lot with very little. Um, for like a, like a bench top, if you have a stretcher front and back that is like two inches thick, just a small two inch by three quarter inch stretcher, then you can make a top that's four foot long um, that's only three quarter inch thick. And you can sit on that all you want, and it wouldn't be any problem at all for most hardwoods. I, I don't know if I'd want to do that with a, uh, like a uh, one by two pine probably wouldn't do it, but a one by two oak, yeah, no problem. Um, and that's that's really one of those things you've got to experiment, experiment and play with it. Um, one of the the best ways to get to know that is Google image search. Um, whenever I'm getting ideas and I'm designing something, Google image search is phenomenal. Um, so when I was working on the bed, I went onto Google image and I searched. 
um, mission style bed frame. And I pulled up a half dozen pictures and saved them to a file. And then I searched um, um, green and green bed frame. And then I searched uh, arts and craft bed frame. And then I searched, uh, what's the other one? Uh, mission green and green um, craftsman bed frame. And so I pulled up probably like 20 or 30 pictures of beds that I liked and I pulled little elements from them. Well, not only am I pulling elements from them, but I'm also pulling construction items. So I'm seeing how thick did they make this. And in some designs, thickness and beefiness are part of the design. Like my table upstairs is way stronger than it needs to be. That base could hold a top that is uh, 400 times heavier. It is incredibly strong. Um, and it's really thick and beefy, but that thick and beefy is part of the design. It's part of the aesthetic. I could make it much, much thinner and give me still a really nice solid top. Um, so sometimes you want that thick and beefy look and it's way overbuilt. But for something where you're trying to be minimalistic and making things as small as possible, um, I like looking at modern designs. Um, so type in um, modern shoe bench or modern wooden shoe bench. Uh, and you'll come up with all these really thin designs and you can see how thin can people actually still make something and make it structurally supportive. Uh, when you're thinking about strength, sometimes that goes into wood choice. So if I use a hickory, which is a very um, flexible but very sturdy wood, I can build very thin things out of hickory. Whereas if I were trying to build the same item out of pine, I'd have to make it much bigger so that the pine would support it. So um, going and looking on Google Images gives you a lot of good ideas about what have other people done. But uh, the best thing is just to experiment and play with things. If you don't know how strong a board is, well, cut a board to that side and put that size and put some weight on it and see if it breaks. And learn about it. Well, does it deflect much? Um, is it deflecting too much? Um, is it, it's fine for one person sitting on it, but is it fine for four people sitting on it? Or is it fine with one person sitting in the middle and then someone else comes over and crashes on their lap? which that happens in my house. We have three kids and um, is it designed to be able to take that? You, you don't know until you've actually tested it. So take a stick out and make it a certain thickness and see if it deflects. And that might give you a, a good idea about how but big it needs to be. You test it by borrowing a child and having them <laughs> Yes. <laughs> have them jump up and down on it. So I hope that gives you some ideas. What's next? Um. Samwise asked earlier, I can find plenty of tutorials on using the paid versions of SketchUp. Can't afford the 120 a year for a tool I'll only use a few times a year. Are there any good tutorials for the free version? Um, yes. Um, well, yeah, if, if the, uh, the J Bates, those are all the free, ver free version. Um, if you go back to the 2017 version, um, that is the free version uh, that is the paid version. It's just missing a few bells and whistles. It does exactly the same. It just doesn't have the the DXF printouts um, and some of the other extras that that go into layout. Um, and so you can you can use those on the the old uh, 2017 version. Um, but yeah, Jay Bates, his tutorials are phenomenal. So definitely definitely go take a look at that. All right. And then John Lane earlier asked to use Quizlet. Quizlet? I do not know what Quizlet is. Send me a link. I'll make a look. I've used most of the high-end um, CAD programs, SolidWorks, um, VectorWorks, uh, uh, the CAD, um, several different CAD programs. Uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Autodesk uh, programs. Um, I don't get as much into the cheap free ones um, as that hasn't been my background as much. Josh, Babin, Babin, sorry. Uh, great info on laying out designs, James, but what about creating your own style rather than how we all seem to constantly be rehashing Shaker, Queen Anne, Queen Anne Modern, etc.? cetera? Um, honestly, there is no such thing as a new style. Every style is a compilation of other styles with a slight personal twist on it. And you're never going to come up with your style until you've hashed out other people's styles for a long time. Uh, like we think of green and green as a really cool specific style, but it is um, craftsman or mission style with cloud lifts and the through tenons are designed more and then they put in fake through tenons for an artistic item. 
it's it's not too much more than that that they've taken their own things in that i've started to get into a little bit of my own design with through dovetails the show dovetails um, and some of those intricacies I'm, I'm starting to get designs that i that i'm feeling that those are are are, are me but still those are just jumps off of mission style and craftsman and green and green and other things that have influenced me and you won't come to your own design until you have hashed through other people's designs do not and i repeat this over and over again do not design something that you're trying to be different um, that is is a is a way to run into problems um, some of the most intriguing designs i've seen out there are when someone takes something and then they add a little bit more to it as they're thinking I, i'm going to do um, i'm going to do this modern interpretation but i'm going to add a rock to it and then they do a little bit of carving in the rock and then they make the the fluid of that rock coming off and so they're taking something that's already there and step by step by step by step they're moving away from it and every step in between is going to have three or four pieces of furniture that are made in that particular influence and the next step has three or four more pieces where they're hashing through it and they're playing through what they like and what they don't like until eventually they come to something that's so far away from the original that it seems like a really new thing but if you see the whole evolution of all the steps that have come into it you'll see that it's really just an expression of how someone has grown over time and uh, you're not going to be able to immediately jump into and say i want to make my own design and make something completely new it's something that has to be built off of the experience of playing with other designs and getting inspiration for different things and seeing can i take this idea and this idea and mix them together and most of the time you're going to mix them together and you're like eh, it's okay but next time i'm going to try this a little differently like with the dresser um the through tails on it I, I i wanted to make a way for the drawer to stop without putting a back on the dresser normally the back is your your stop so the drawers and i was playing with that and i one of the thoughts i had come to me the other day is i saw someone make uh, brass pins that go through the tails into the pin board um, and he had trimmed them off flush at the outside but then my brain thought what if i made those brass pins extend out the sides of the drawer and those brass pins sticking out then became the stops so that when they slide in they recess into the drawer face a little bit and that's something that's rolling around my back of my brain one of these days i'm actually going to experiment with it it may work out great it may not it may be something that i impl implement into my future projects and that's another way that my design will slowly change over time so do not try and make something new hash on what other people have done and then change little bits here and there and eventually you'll come around to your own design and your own style um, but don't don't try and say i'm doing something new because it never turns out right and uh, that's that's where you run into problems what oh alan asked well he knows that you'll be looking at molding for chair ideas you want to know what i'm looking forward to doing or seeing in london <laughs> we're doing some fun things yeah, the first day we're there, we're going to be going down to the HMS Victory, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that and seeing the um, seeing the hand-hewn beams um, and the, the boat construction. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that because there's always an amazing amount of information, inspiration that goes into seeing timber framing. I like the idea of timber framing and downsizing it just a little bit and making furniture that way. Uh, that, that's an aesthetic that I really like. That was my question, not yours. Sorry. What, what's your answer then? <laughs> I, my, my tops have to be British Museum, Globe Theater. Florence Nightingale. I'm getting there. The universe, <laughs> I have to go to the Florence Nightingale. That's just like Mecca. Um, let's see. What else is there that we're going? Well, we're going to go to West End and see Phantom. Anyways, we did that on our honeymoon in New York, so I'm excited about that. What else are we doing? Uh, Westminster. Westminster. Um, we'll go to uh, A and V, or V and A. Oh, the Victoria and Albert. Albert Museum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're we're kind of history nerds. Yeah, and I love yeah. going to old arch architecture and, and just walking around old buildings. That's that's something you don't get much in the U.S. Real baby watch. The old buildings just don't exist um, with no. that old architecture. <laughs> I mean, if you go to like DC and you see some of these 
infamous buildings that are huge and monstrous and, and beautiful and gorgeous and all stone. There's a lot of inspiration there, but it is, it's all kind of hearkening back to a design from Europe and England that is existing. Um, I'd love to, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to going and seeing that. Yes, Lynn and I, we're going there too. Yeah, it's on the list. What else? Uh, la, la, la. So Wertha Everett asked, when will you build a timber-framed treehouse for the kiddos? <laughs> That's actually been on your list. Yeah, um, I, I, want to, I want to build a treehouse. Uh, the, the trees I can build it in um, are, are in the easement. So um, our property runs, uh, we own a section of property in back of our house that we're not allowed to build anything on because it's underneath the power lines. So it's an easement that the power lines are allowed to be there um, and they're allowed to access that, that space. So we can't build anything permanent in that. So I can put a shed out there, but I have to make the shed movable so I can pull it out if they ever need to move trucks through there. That being said, the chances of them ever having to bring something through there are so far and few between that I'm thinking about building a tree house in one of the trees back in there. Um, going back and forth, I might do it this summer. I might not, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I would love to do that. <laughs> so Alan asked, oh, Wait, where did it go? About furniture, what you're going to build for the house. Other than the bed, what are some of the next projects we will see this summer? A bookcase is a great idea. Also making wooden mold planes, i.e. dovetail, would be great. Um, I don't have a huge amount of furniture projects on the list. We have a lot of furniture in the house, and we don't have a lot of needs for it. Um, I, I'm probably going to build a bench for the table next. Um, I'm yeah, thinking about bench coming? what's that when's my bench coming your bench your woodworking bench yeah no. you, you gotta build your own bench babe <laughs> okay next time on <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about building a uh, a shoe storage bench with a with a coat tree behind it oh well, that's been um, like three years yeah that that was that was on the original list when I started doing hand tool woodworking um, but I, I want to do a lot of, I have a, a ton of little projects I want to do. Like a, I want to do a couple molding planes. I want to do a dovetail plane. Um, and so when the bed is done, I'm probably going to do a bunch of those little projects before I move on to doing the table bench. Um, I want to do a whole bunch of little projects for a while. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, it's coming up. What else? Uh, let's see. Did I go to the House of the Green Gables in Salem, Massachusetts? I've never been to Massachusetts, to be honest. So, no. I have not visited there. I've been to Massachusetts. He doesn't understand this is your show. I know. I know, Alan. <laughs> uh, let's see. I want a treehouse and a hammock. There you go. Yeah, the hammock, that would, that would be on Sarah's list. Um, well, Rod wants you to do a giveaway. <laughs> that wasn't on the... We're, we're going to be gone the next two weeks, so I'm not going to do one now. Oh, pay him 10 bucks to make you one. <laughs> uh, but there was, okay, going back to HMS Victory. Ah, la, 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 la. A live streamer just submitted the timber framing inside the ship. It would be really nice for those of us who can't see that stuff. That's what Blue Kestrel wants. I would like to. Most of the time, those sites, they don't allow videoing, um, and they'd be very picky about me doing a live. If possible, what I would love to do is do the live Q&A from there. I think that would be absolutely fun to do, um, but I don't know. Um, so stay tuned. Who knows what the live Q&A is going to be next week because it'll be Tuesday next week when we're at HMS Victory. But um, what time are we? Are we switching the time up? Yes, it will be earlier in the day, so I don't know. Like If we're doing it at like 3 p.m. there, it would be... The eight hours ahead? Yeah, it would be 9 a.m. here. Um, <laughs> Um, so I'll, I'll probably end up doing something later in the day, like 8 or 9 there. So it would be like 3 o'clock here. Um, so stay tuned. I'll be posting it on Wood by Right and the Hive Mind. So, yeah. Maybe we'll do a couple mini ones. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, maybe we'll downtown London. Like, ooh, you guys need to see this. Let's do a live. Might do that. I'll be bringing my video equipment. Should we do it from my point of view or from your point of view? <laughs> yes. Looking up at everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything looks a little bigger from down here. <laughs> uh, we got time for one or two more? I'm caught up for now. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I think that about does it. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, 
This is one of those topics that's kind of hard to cover, and so I was wanting to do a video on it, but I thought a, a live would be a little bit better because it's one of those, every project is designed differently, so how can you really say this is how you design a project? But uh, yeah, start from the big and start taking it down step by step by step, just like any other project, one step at a time, and you can cover anything. So hope you like that. Um, and otherwise, for next week, stay tuned, and we will be doing something fun over the next two weeks while we're in the UK. Anything else? Cool. Yeah. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Find the button. Where's the button? Yeah, there's the button there. Oh, here we go.